The iMac G3 Flower Power. Friendly, adorable, a rare relic of a younger and more innocent Apple. Which is why today we're going to ruin it with Linux. So stay tuned. And if you enjoy exploring the nerdy pursuits of years gone by, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. The iMac G3 Flower Power was released in early 2001, alongside the equally quirky Dalmatian. Together, they represented the culmination of an era where friendly, cute designs set apart the Macintosh from a sea of beige Windows boxes. These patterned iMacs were apparently not very popular back in the day, and coupling that with their short time in the market, sold for just a few months, these are actually pretty hard to find these days. And they also have pretty decent specs. This has an improved 500 megahertz 750CX G3, Rage 128 Ultra graphics. Oh, and this CRT, it supports up to 1024 by 768 all of which makes it a nice candidate for this, a boxed retail copy of Yellow Dog Linux, the Linux specifically made for PowerPC Macs. It will probably be no surprise to you that I've been looking for a nice boxed copy of Yellow Dog Linux for quite a while now. And this is version 2.1, which means it will work on a wide variety of very old Macs. Kernel 2.4.10 cutting edge. On the back here we can see the minimum system requirements are an Apple 7200 and most PowerPC clones. So yeah, works on pretty much anything. And very exciting, we can run macOS 8.6 through 9x inside of Linux using Mac on Linux. Taking a look inside we have the guide to installing Yellow Dog Linux 2.1 and we have our install CDs. Oh, who's this little guy? It must be the extremely relevant sponsor of today's video, ClassicBot. ClassicBot is a range of adorable doodads by designer Philip Lee, who is all about that 80s and 90s computer aesthetic. I have here a range of delightfully Apple-y stuff. Let's unbox it. Let's open up the ClassicBot Classic here. This little guy is super detailed, and look, he's magnetic. Look at this adorable mouse and keyboard. Absolutely wonderful. Let's look at this little floppy disk. And now we have the TrashBot 2.0 stationary set. Goodness gracious, I love this packaging. <laughs> this is a metal whiteboard and we have a little stand that we can put on there. The trash can is actually a pen holder. And look, if you write a note on the little notepad, you can stick it up on your desk with these little magnetic icons. They also sent me all of these lovely pins that I am definitely putting on my guitar strap. Classic Bot gave me a special deal to give out to all of you, 30% off their stationery and figures. Just use my code ACTION30 at checkout. Again, code ACTION30 for 30% off. And thanks again Classic Bot for being perhaps the most relevant sponsor I've ever had. All right, the last time I tried powering this thing up was months ago, so let's make sure it still works. All right, let's see what this thing has installed. All right, we are running macOS 10.2.3. Oh, this is the 600 megahertz variant. Oh man, you can see the internal substructure cracking. These things are so brittle on the inside. All right, well, 256 megs of RAM is well above the minimum system requirements for YDL 2.1. So let's just install this. Ooh. CD-ROM drive is not particularly happy. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> All right, through the cutting application of poking at it with a little bit of plastic, I got the CD in, and there it is. Oh yeah, look at that. It's booting into the install GUI. I recently learned that the number of penguins up here is the number of CPUs in the machine. Yes, I shall agree to all of your legal terms, yellow dog. 
Now the handy printed instructions here gives us important information about partitioning the disks. Our partition map will look something like this. So we'll have the 10 megabyte boot partition, very important. I think I'll do 512 megs for swap and the rest of the disk as extended to for all of our file system. All right, so let's partition the disk. This is telling me Linux swap between 64 and 256 megs, so maybe I'll cap it at 256. And I've already installed macOS 9 in a four gigabyte partition. So we will give the rest of the disk to Linux with a 10 megabyte boot partition. We'll stick with 256 megs for swap. And the rest of the disk for our file system. All right, let's format. All right, a strong secure password. That's definitely not just the word action. Do I wish to install the bootloader? Absolutely. And yes, I do have macOS 9 installed. Which operating system do you want your computer to boot from by default? That's gonna be Linux. You have just completed the Yellow Dog Linux 2.1 Fuji installation. Awesome. All right, I guess we're just restarting. Look at this. We have a boot menu, L for Linux, M for Mac OS, and C for CD-ROM. We will choose L for Linux. Oh yeah, it's booting. We are Yellow Doggin. And here we are, the graphical login for localhost.local domain. Ooh, slight problem. When I move the mouse around, the speakers make a noise. All right, we'll worry about that later. Oh yeah, look at that old KDE logo. <laughs> oh, oh, that is awesome. All right, volume keys don't seem to do anything. KDE offers many visually appealing effects. We're gonna turn this slider all the way up to more effects. All right, I'm just gonna turn volumes all the way down. For now, I don't know why it's making all this noise when I move the mouse, but that solved it. And we can do an initial configuration of Mac on Linux using MOLV config from the command line. All right, we can increase the memory on Mac on Linux by editing this MOLRC file. It's set to 48 megabytes by default. Yeah, should probably be increased. I'm gonna say 64. And now let's boot back up into Mac OS. Oh, that is so awesome to see. All right, I'm curious if the network connection goes through to Mac on Linux. Well, Internet Explorer does not work. All right, let's reboot this thing into Mac OS and try to install some software. Now we're going to choose M for Mac OS. Look at that lovely flower power wallpaper. Amazing. And of course, you know we're gonna download Wolfenstein 3D from the Macintosh garden. Install in Wolfenstein 3D. Oh yeah, Wolfenstein works great on this thing. Awesome. All right, let's reboot into Linux. Oh, I forgot about these. Candolph's useful tips. Early 2000s Linux was the best Linux. All right, let's start up our Mac on Linux and see if we can run Wolfenstein. Well, that's an interesting color of green. Oh, I think it's a color scheme specifically for the flower power. Now that we booted it up for the first time on the flower power. That's so funny because the first time we booted this install of Mac OS, it was in Mac on Linux. It's only after we booted it on actual hardware that it put all the flower power stuff in. How well does Wolfenstein 3D run? Let's find out. Actually pretty well. All right, let me try getting some audio in. Ooh, the whole system is slowed down quite a bit. All right, well, apparently audio does not come through into Mac on Linux, which is a bit surprising. All right, let's see what kind of hilarious wallpapers we have on here. Now, that's a pretty good classic KDE wallpaper. Pretty good, pretty good. 
All right, there's a vacuum cleaner. You know, I'm a fan of just a nice blue background. Yeah, looks pretty good. So that's what it was like to dual boot a Macintosh back in 2001. And I really loved messing around with old Linux distros because the early 2000s is when I really discovered and used Linux on various old Macs, including a titanium PowerBook G4 and my trusty Pentium 200 megahertz. In any event, that'll do it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more weird Linuxy shenanigans, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And I just want to give a very special thank you to all of my Patreon supporters and channel members. Thank you so much, each and every one of you, for supporting me and supporting this channel and all the weird stuff I do. I am so very grateful and I just could not do this without you.